Ladies and gentlemen, I've been trying to get this guy up here in this studio for quite some time now, and I'm so happy that we finally made it happen. We did it. Yep. Here on the podcast, Mr. Kevin Harmon. Hey, hey, hey. Nice hey, to be here. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Doing great. Good day. Yeah, man. It, it, even though it's raining and cloudy and stuff like that, it, it's still a good day. We're six feet yeah. above ground, and that's, that's anything it. to be thankful about. That's it. Yes, sir. What all you been into, buddy? Uh, we've been working on a Pink Floyd project, and I'm playing with a few other bands, but uh, the main focus is this Pink Floyd tribute night we're working yep. on, so that's that's fun, and just doing the, doing the thing, working every day, and having yep. a blast. Coming up uh, this Saturday, right? This Saturday, yes, at the uh, Appalachian Center for the Arts in Pikeville, it's going to be a... It's going to be a cool night. It's not just a concert, it's a party, so yeah. costume party, you know, specials on drinks, and just a cool vibe and a cool rock and roll night to play one of the greatest records ever. Yeah, I'm, I mean, really, it actually is one of the greatest albums of all time. Yes. Like, like I was telling you before we hopped on air here, I, I'm a Floyd freak, so I'll be spewing out all types of yes, fun so. facts about this record as we dive into it. But w- I would say that this is probably, if, if any band wants to cover a full album out there and get people out to the show, this is it, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, any Led Zeppelin album or Back in Black, any of the real classic rock albums would be good too. But this is one that, for some reason, just really resonates yeah. with people. When we first started talking about it, we just had this big idea: let's do a whole album for a Halloween party. This was pre pre COVID, so we were talking, just throwing out records and. Somebody said the wall, and we were like, "Oh my god, we can't do that." And so we were like, "Let's try Dark Side." We we're like, "Oh, that's an easy one." We did not know. Well, I mean, we listened to it our whole life, so it was kind of embedded, but we hadn't broke it down. So we was like, "Yes, yeah, the wall." We or uh, Dark Side. Let's jump in. Let's do it. And uh, we sat down to learn it. You know, we all went our separate ways and tried to work out our parts and. When we showed up that first day, we were like, I don't know if we can do this. I mean, (laughs) there are so many moving parts. Yeah. And they're all simple parts. When you first listen, you're like, okay, these are easy parts. And then you're like, it's the combination. It's 20 simple parts put together in a magic way. Yeah. So you have to take all those pieces, and they all have to work together. And we were like, can we do this? I don't know. So... We dove in and spent hours and hours making notes and and doing the whole thing and trying to get it to a, yeah. a level that we can go out and play it. So it's been it's been crazy. See that that's one thing that uh, me and Tony were talking about uh, last time. Whenever y'all played the Mac, we had him up here to promote that show, and that's one thing that we were talking about. I, I know it's a very difficult thing for bands to play now in 2021. But I mean, just imagine how it was without back the then. technology. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, for for all the uh, kids nowadays with a computer and have Logic or FL Studio on or something like that, you can just record something off the internet and put a, you know dub it like that, and, and, and it's easy. Back then, they were cutting tape. Yes, Alan yes. Parsons had to go out to antique shops and actually record all the clocks for time. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it was ridiculous what they had to go through for that album. And think about it. We're just recreating it. They invented it. I mean, they dreamed it up. They yeah. made the sounds that we still listen to. I mean, that's a piece of art that... That's a magic that can't be touched again, I don't think, you know. And and the crazy thing is, too, whenever I was, like, looking at fun facts about this, like, I have the same exact opinion as you do. Like, it is just a masterpiece of an album. So much that, I mean, it's it's still relevant here 50-something years later. But I think they've done the entire thing, like, seven weeks. Uh, How crazy is that? that? How crazy is that? Mind-blowing. But and who knows like how they even did it? I think that I don't know what 
exactly the zone is right, that right. people talk about. But but everybody who dabbles in some type of art knows what the zone is, whether you're a painter, whether you're a musician or video editing, anything. There, there's that zone that you get in. And I wish that I was smart enough to understand exactly what creates that mindset or what that mindset even is. I don't even know if we I can think it's really a understand. Gift. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it's I don't think you go like plan it out and get there. I think it's just a magic that you're gifted with that yeah. happens at certain times and if you don't capture it then it's gone, you know. Yeah. Some people are lucky enough to have it more than once. Bob Dylan yeah. or Pink Floyd or but some of us may not have it that many times, you know. Yeah. And some people have, I think they get that mojo and that, that special place and they don't capture it. They let it slip by. So I think yeah. everybody has it, but some people just don't grab it. I, I just think that some things are, they're almost meant to be. Like whenever um, an artist will say like, I don't know, it just came to me, or right. it came to me in a dream, or whatever. Whatever that is on the other side, I think that sometimes things are just, you know, like I said, meant to be. And I think that this is just that album that it was meant to be. It's such a crazy album from front to back. Like whenever I, I remember listening to it the first time. I was on a road trip in North Carolina, and I was a really, really, really little kid. A at that time, I was a big 90s country fan. I was listening to, like, you know, Toby Keith, and I, I was also in the Steve Miller band and a, a, f a few other bands. But I And I thought I had an idea of exactly what music was, a very naive, like, seven-year-old kid. Right, I was right. like, oh, you know, just a chorus, verse, chorus, and then the song ends. It's like three and a half minutes. Then my dad played me Dark Side of the Moon, and I'm like, what is this? Uh, I had never heard anything like it. it. It totally changed the game. Yeah, yeah, it just stretches, it, it just stretches everything, the whole pop song format, just everything, it changes it. And think, you think about those guys creating it too, uh, David and uh, Roger, and they they put it together, but even now they're trying to recreate it. You know, they fight or whatever in their separate ways, but yeah. it's a magic that took all of those parts to have that mojo that you're talking about at the same time. And I think yeah. that's probably what what it is. It's not one guy's zone. It's five guys hit the zone at the same time or, or yeah. however many guys. So you, when that happens... It's bigger than, like, you know, one person. And I think the album was that. Yeah. I, I think Roger had a bet with their manager whenever they finished it that it, it wouldn't even break the top ten on on the charts. And that's so crazy to think about now because I, I think it's, like, the longest – it has, like, the Guinness Book of World Record for the longest chart – well, the longest album on the charts. Yeah. I think, I think it was, like – 12 years or something like that it was in the billboard 200 and he thought that it wouldn't even break top 10 whenever they first recorded it and now look. They, they would have never guessed what this album was capable of and it come out of a time that it, it just stood out i mean what were they thinking at that point they were experimenting with pedals and synthesizers and and lsd yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that played a part, I'm sure. But it was different than everything else. So it just captured our hearts, you know. I mean, we're still like, I go through my book and try to make sure my notes are right, you know, to yeah. capture what they, a little piece of what they did. And they created it. And we're just trying to get their mojo for just that split second. How cool is that? I mean, what was like the, uh, for y'all the hardest part to recreate about this album it's not a single part when like if you just picked out one part of the album i think uh it's not that complicated like you can learn the guitar part or you can learn a keyboard part or a synth part or the drums but it's 
it's trying to like we went home and learned it but then when we got together you got to make it work yeah together with a flow and i think that that is the comp the complicated thing you know getting yeah. getting it locked together getting those synthesizers cuz even you know rick wright's playing simple parts but if they're not exact or close as i can get then then the mojo is gone yeah it don't make room for that guitar solo that's so that needs to be so perfect or you know if the drums if you speed those songs up which that's one of our struggles that we had in the beginning keeping that tempo because if you change that tempo the vibe changes and that's something you don't you know you don't want you want the tempo yeah. right the vibe's got to be right so when tony hits those david gilmore licks that they sing the yeah. way they're supposed to so i think it's not a single part hard i think it's setting down together yeah. you know making and, it work and you're also playing an album that i mean almost everybody knows so, oh, yeah. so if you do miss a part people's like oh he, th that they missed that or i would say that would be a difficult part of it too right and you know it's a. Uh, we are who we are. We're not Pink Floyd. So, you know, a good 60% is like 100% for us. You know, it, yeah. it's not going to be Dark Side of the Moon. It's our tribute. It's our best version of that. So uh, we've worked really hard to get there. But, you know, we're not David Gilmore and Rick Wright. And, I mean, they had a magic that yeah. only happens once on Earth, you know. So... Uh, but, but you're right. That's but, a scary, especially at the Mac. The Mac was like a show. People were coming to watch us play that album, and so you know, you talk yeah. about nervous. You like, if I mess up this part and they hear it, they're gonna know it. You're exactly right. Yeah. So, but I would say that y'all are more than sixty percent, man. I, I unfortunately I had to work that night. I didn't get to go to that show, but I've watched all the clips that y'all have posted from that show right, right. and man the great gig in the sky y'all killed that I, appreciate I, it. I, I mean that is i mean very 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 close to a hundred percent well i i don't know if we'll ever be a hundred percent but we put in the time so we're trying it it, it it did turn out better than we thought and and we got those girls singing man that are just magic who are they kelly Oh no! You asked me <laughs> so fast. It also, to, to to those ladies and anybody out there listening, we are recording at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So so that that that's a, that's an excuse that we can use. I, I don't. But they I, killed it, man. They killed it. They, they absolutely killed it. And uh, yeah, they spent third time. They had their parts learned when they walked in, and uh, it was a. It's amazing to hear that happen because we rehearse the album for months before they come in because you know we were working you know you should hear the first rehearsals it, you know we yeah. were just putting in time sweating and you know how are we going to do this and then yeah when they came in we were you know advanced a little bit they come in and you're like oh we can do this you know yeah. we can put these pieces together then we added Dustin and the saxophone, and it's like, yes, yes, yeah, this is going to be fun. At that moment, when you start hearing the, the great gig of the sky, we played it for a month with no singers. Wow. And just counting. So, you know, counting the parts. And it's like, okay, we can get through it. And then you hear them, and you're like, we can't. We're going to do more than get through it. We're yeah. going to have fun. Whenever I learned Dustin Hoover was doing money too, I was like, "Oh, what a the the perfect person to yeah. do money." Oh yeah, yeah. He uh, Dustin's a monster. Uh, he he sings all of those high harmonies too that are so hard to hear. He just nails all them, and he just comes in like he owns the album. You know, he grew up with the album too, yeah. so he's probably heard the album more times than I can even think of, but. Uh, and he just knows it. 
But, you know, Dustin Hoover, he knows every song. Yeah. Have you heard Dustin play anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, the, the man is a, he, he's, he's a genius. He, there's people that's born with talent. Man, oh, yeah. And he's one of those people. Oh, yeah. He's got a song list just in his brain that I can't even comprehend. And he has the look and everything. Like, oh, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That's just a rock and roll He's dude. got the vibe. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're happy to have him. So who all is in Down to the River? Uh, well, it's me. I'm playing keyboards. Tony Mullins is on guitar. Uh, Charlie Cable's on guitar. Timmy Tackett's on bass. And Rini is playing drums, and he's doing all the percussion and the samples, and he's doing all that, too. I feel sorry for that guy. He's got he's a, wor- a job. He, he's really working <laughs> really hard because he, he's making sure the timing of the show goes the right way. Yeah. The tempos are right. Things are triggered when they have to be, you know, the weird laughing and all that. Uh, yeah. He's doing all that. Wow. He's got something in his ear telling him, talking, and, oh, man, it's a nightmare. I got the easiest job. <laughs> I, I just – get to groove you know with the band yeah. so i got a, a fun it's a fun night for me do you know like how he got all the samples or did you have to recreate the samples i don't know i oh. have no idea well, whenever i come out this saturday i'm gonna have a conversation with him because that's another thing that a lot of kids who uh make their own music nowadays will not understand like, like we were saying before if you want a money sample or a laughing sample you can just go on youtube and download it off of there back then i mean it was all done right there on the spot and and i love how they went about it too the the story that i read was that roger just had cue cards the the same questions on with with everybody that they interviewed and they asked him about uh you know what do you think happens after death or when was the last time you were violent? And what was the reason why? Just these crazy, off-the-wall questions. But it made for some amazing samples. Yes, yes. And I, I'm not sure. He probably, I know he spent hours and hours putting it all together. But I'm not sure where he got all the bits and pieces. Now, we're sneaking in. You know, this uh, this weekend... It's a party, and you know the Wizard of Oz, the yeah. myth that goes along with that. Well, we're sneaking in some samples from that and some different things. So there's going to be some Wizard of Oz, and actually the whole band will be dressed as the cast of Wizard of Oz. Man, you sent me that picture, <laughs> and, and, and I was like, what is that from? And I even Googled, like, rock and roll fairy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like, what, what is that? And as soon as you just said that right there, boom, it clicked. That is cool, man. Whose idea was that? Uh, I don't know. You know, the Wizard of Oz, everybody knows the story. You yeah. play, started on the third roar or whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so... When we were doing this, we all watched The Wizard of Oz. And, you know, we, we want to get in the the mood of the album. Yeah. And uh, not just play it, but feel it. And uh, so we were watching it. And, and then this was a costume party. Yeah. It's Halloween. We were like, let's dress up as The Wizard of Oz cast. So we all picked. And I picked The Good Witch. I will be Glenda. Nice. So, did, did anybody get Dorothy? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Kelly will be Dorothy. Okay, cool, cool. And that'll be that'll be cool. Yeah, man, y'all are doing this right. I so, didn't know that. That's cool, man. Yeah. So this is a Halloween party this this time. So everybody, you know, it's a costume party, and it's going to be we're going to play the full album, but it's also a party. There's going to be drink specials, and and uh, everybody's going to be dressed up and. It's just going to be a great night, you know, friends and fun and yeah, and rock and roll. It's going to be awesome, man. And like I said, you know, any I think that this is just an album that so many people who are into classic rock and just rock in general want to see played live because, unfortunately, 
we're probably never going to get that chance. Right. I, I would love for Pink Floyd to come back together and just do one run of tours. I don't care if the ticket is $1,000. Right. I'm buying that ticket. But unfortunately, I, I don't know if it's ego. I don't know money. Well, there's a or, lot of factors. Yeah. There, probably. Yeah, but you know, like it's it's just unfortunate that we won't get to see that played live. So that's why I'm so thankful that a great band like Down to the River is taking on this role. Because if anybody can pull it off, man, it's y'all. Y'all have been producing some incredible records. G is for Carlos. That 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 was one of my favorite songs of 2020, man. Hey, I appreciate that. That was a fun a fun song. But yeah, we're we're trying to just get in the mood of the record and and soak it in. And, you know, maybe capture a little bit of the feeling that they had at that, you know, yeah. the specialness of, of that time and that record. And it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I, I, I just wonder, like, who figured out the Wizard of Oz thing, the, the, the dark side of I Oz or whatever too. they call it? Like, who had that much time on their hands that... Was it like accidental? Were they trying to watch the movie and listen to the record at the same time? I mean, like, I, I just don't see how in the world they figured out that. And I don't know how much it goes into it, but because uh, I've watched it two or three times now, trying to match it up, and and I can convince myself that it's there, and then yeah. I can convince myself otherwise, but. The folklore and the the myth behind that now has become part of part of the album. There's Facebook groups. There's you know whole web pages devoted on how that matches up and each little yeah. thing. And so that's become a special thing too, all on its own. You know, separate mm-hmm. from the band. So uh, yeah, I just think it's mm-hmm. it's cool that an album. Yeah, but I, I wonder too yeah. who come up. I mean, who was sitting around and watched it enough times? While they were listening to Dark Side, you know there were yeah. drugs involved. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. De- a, a very late night in Colorado oh, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. somewhere, you know. But it it, it really is. Have you it, done it? Yes, yeah. and like like you said, I, I think that there's some parts you're like, eh, I don't know. But the the lunatic on the grass one, now yeah. that that that's a little bit weird. But I also think that there might have been drugs involved for people to think that that was. Right. Really involved, uh, you know, and and who knows? Pink Floyd says that that was all coincidental, but yeah, who knows? Right, and it it probably was coincidental, but at this point in in pop culture and our world, it's it's part of it now. I mean, it's fun it's fun to incorporate that on a Halloween night, you yeah. know. So we're yeah, excited. I love that y'all are dressing up like the Wizard of Oz, man. That's such a neat touch that y'all are putting on that. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it'll be a trip. It'll be a trip. And, and Tony, like, I, I, I don't know exactly uh, what the style of production y'all are doing with this, but he hit me up whenever y'all performed it at the Mac. He's like, "Hey, you have that on record, right? R- r- record the record with your phone and like, like, because he's want to do all types of video programming with it too in the background." Yeah. And I just realized how much thought that y'all put into this performance. Oh, yeah. And it really makes me appreciate how much time and effort that y'all are putting into this. Yeah, nobody knows the work that Tony's doing. Like he's working every day on this thing, working on the video, and you know he created the whole video, and you know he's got a lot of work. You know he's got to play slide parts, and you know he's doing the piano thing for Great Gig, and he's doing so much work, and he is spending every. You know, he's trying to make sure the vibe's right because that's part of it. You know, the vibe's right at the venue. So it's not stale. It's a a cool Pink Floyd vibe when you walk in the door and all those things. So he's he's putting in some time. Yeah, yeah. But it's something we care about. It's an album we love. And uh, in the end, it's a fun night of rock and roll that we get to grab a piece of Pink Floyd's legacy and... Have fun with it. I, I don't know if there's like a greatest rock album of all time necessarily. I mean, to each his own. But this is, it, it might just be that because I don't know, I, I don't really know an album you can really put up there 
with this one. That one, one that everybody knows, even if you're not a rock fan. I think that there was a statistic one time where it was like one, like one in a hundred people all in the United States have a copy of this album. Yeah. That there's no other record like that. No, and it's an album that from start to finish, like. We all have albums where you're like, I like the eighth song or, you know, track seven or, you know, whatever. But this one, you know it from start to finish. Yeah. So everybody knows all the songs on this record. So that's crazy to yeah. think. Yeah, I think it was like one of the first records to do that, too, where like every song was a hit or, or at least made its way to radio right. in some form. And, and two, like... It was crazy that they pulled that off to to make a compilation album where each song can live in itself as a single as well is very hard to pull off. Right, right. Yeah, a collective album. I mean, I mean after the first song, you go into the second song and we're playing, and then it shifts back into the chords of the first song. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean... All that together, and each one can still be a hit or whatever. That's crazy. Yeah, Alan Parsons, that dude was a freaking genius how yes. he put all this together. I, I know that he was the, the engineer of it, and a lot of other people done other stuff, but like you said, you know, that, that mojo, that zone that they get in, I don't know what that weird energy is, man, but... I'm so thankful that they found this when it, whenever yeah. they were working on the record. Uh, apparently, they were also big fans of uh, Monty Python, too. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, they the only thing that they... Well, whenever they took a break from the album, everybody would watch Monty Python skits. Huh. And the funding of this album is what helped create the Holy Grail film. Really? Yeah. So, so if to any Monty Python fans out there, if it wasn't for Dark Side of the Moon, you would never have Monty Python's Holy Grail. What? That's yeah. some crazy facts. So, so, so you would never have, you know, a tis but a flesh wound. Yeah. So you are deep in this. You know all the facts. Dude, this is my favorite rock album of yeah. all time. I'm Because, I mean, like, like I said, that there's nothing like it. I still love... You know, Uma Guma oh, yeah, and yeah. Wish You Were Here and, and The Wall and stuff like that. But there's just something about this record that is so special. Uh, and I guess just because of how deep it is, too. I think about stuff way too much. Uh, my, my mind races and all that. And, and whenever you're listening to an album like this, if you are a critical thinker, your mind can just wonder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I've listened to this album so much, just trying to get in that mindset. My kids are not huge fans of it at this point. <laughs> They'll grow into it. You know, when the know. clocks kick on, my son, who just, oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, soak it in, son. Soak it in. Uh, I, I think that like there should be college courses on this album. Yeah. You, you probably there probably could. are. Yeah, yeah. There, there there probably is. I mean that would make sense for it to be. And, and I also love how uh, Pink Floyd made a lot of speculation into it. like they they've never said the reason behind the album cover. Right. That they, they've always just they wanted the fans to interpret it whatever way that they wanted to. And I think that that was such a cool thing for them to do. It, it, it's it's kind of aggravating to a super fan like me. Right, you want to know. Yeah, I want to know so bad. But they've, they've never said, still to this day, they've never really said what the album cover means. Right. And, and it's cool to just... I, I love music that you have to sit down and listen to. Not exactly dance or shake your butt or whatever just an album that you have to sit down and listen to and 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 just appreciate right there's not many of those and this is like probably the ultimate one yeah yeah it's unbelievable just a creative masterpiece like we said five guys that got mojo at one time i mean that that don't happen yeah, and and, and, I, and I hope, you know, like maybe someday down the road there's another band like Pink Floyd that comes along. I just don't know if 
that there ever will be. I mean, like it, it was almost it was more than just rock and roll back then. It, it was it's, it was almost like they were in their own genre. Can the world handle another dark side? I don't know. I, I, don't I think know. that they like just open up a time space continuum yeah, yeah. that can't be closed. Who knows? There's some creative stuff out there, but that that may never be topped. Who and, knows? And to be in the early '70s too, like that they were able to pull off a record like this, it's almost like it is impossible. It's magic. Yeah. H- have you ever heard the uh, story of Paul McCartney almost being featured on it? No. Yeah, they uh, recorded this album at uh, Abbey Road's studios, of course. And uh, whenever I was talking about the cue cards earlier, they would just ask random people uh, that were working at Abbey Road's. They asked the doorman, the sound engineers, all the questions. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, and to yeah. anybody that like hears all the voice samples on it, that's who they were. And they had Paul and Linda sit down, but apparently, like Paul and Linda didn't like they well to roger they weren't taking it serious enough and that pissed roger off so he did not include paul mccartney on the album they had it recorded and everything and what a you know just a ballsy move that you didn't include one of the beatles on an album back back when the beatles were the beatles and Pink Floyd wasn't necessarily Pink Floyd yet. Right, right. I mean, that would have skyrocketed them at the time to have one of the Beatles on an album. And they had enough guts to say, no, nah, he didn't take it serious enough. We ain't going to include him. Yeah. Uh, it could have changed everything, really. Maybe in a bad way. I don't know. I mean, to have a pop star speaking in the background or- who knows? Who knows? That's a trip. Yeah, man. It, it, I did not know that at all. It's it, like I said, like it, it's such a fascinating record. Whenever you listen to it, but to all the fans out there, just look into it, and it'll make you appreciate it ten times more. Yeah. So, so for uh, the people that want to go to the show, how do they get tickets, and how much do they cost? I think they're twelve dollars. Twelve dollars a ticket, nice. and. There uh, is a link on my Facebook. It's on the Appalachian Center for the Arts uh, website. Uh, you can just click and get tickets. I'm 99% sure it's $12, uh, but I've been wrong before. <laughs> but I think it's 12 bucks. It's right downtown, 2nd Street in Pikeville. It's 7.30 on Saturday. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Halloween party, so yeah. dress up. Uh, in your crazy costumes and come have a good night. It's in a great place to see a show too, Matt. Ro- Robin and Eric and everybody down there have done an incredible job with that yeah. place. But I, I've, whenever uh, back in the summertime, me and you would always see each other skating around. Yes, downtown. sir. Yes, sir. And that was one of my favorite places to go by. Just how they got it all lit up and at the, night it's gorgeous. Oh yeah. So I mean, just a, an amazing venue. You know, to I'll, see a show too. I love downtown Pikeville, what they're doing and all the magic that's going on. At night, it's just beautiful all all the time, uh, and they're having shows. There's new venues popping up. I mean, it's a great time to play. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's really amazing. There's Main Streets doing music all the time. I mean, there's so much music going on right, you know, right in our hometown. It's crazy. Yeah, they got kind of got like an artsy fartsy thing going on. It's downtown. Wor- yeah, yeah, they're working hard on that too. You can tell, at, you know, always doing something. So it's awesome. Yeah, we're, man, we're lucky to, you know, be playing now instead of you know ten years ago. Or of course we were playing ten years ago. But but what a magical time it is right now. Like I, I remember when I first moved to this area, you and Tony Mullins. Were the first like two music people that I met around this area. I remember going to Mountain Music. Well, to be honest, this was so long ago. I, I, has it always been Mountain Music Exchange? Was it? Uh, I, I, when the first time I met y'all was when where Tony's studio, studio is. Yeah, it was Mountain Music. We were just getting started and wow. cranking it up and uh, trading guitars. I, I was working another job too, so that was a crazy time yeah I, I remember meeting y'all there the uh the first time and 
I just would have never thought that the music scene would be what it is nowadays, all the way back then. Right. It's it's its own community, you know. Yeah, it's special. Yeah. It really is special. And it's exciting. It's exciting to see it bloom and blossom and and turn into something. And I think we're just getting started, you know. Yeah. I think it, it's going to continue to do just that. And we'll see some great players come out of it and some – a uh, great artist, and yeah, we're just getting started. The town's got some good stuff. I love how everybody just supports one another. That that's one thing that always kind of turned me off about entertainment as a whole. The field of it is just you know e- ego and you battle want... of the bands. We don't need yeah. a battle of the bands. <laughs> no, we man. need a where everybody plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow this music community around here figured it out. That like, hey. Everybody play with each other. Everybody support one another. And you will see a music community, a a, a bloom of artistry that is unlike anything else that can be found anywhere. Like, man, I have moved around quite a bit in my life, but I have never seen just the, the sheer amount of talent like we have here in this one little tiny eastern Kentucky area anywhere else and you see uh musicians playing with other bands i mean it's all intertwined like yeah it's there's you know you'll see the same guitar player in three bands or the same bass player sitting in for this guy and it it's all just a mishmash of magic i I really love it i love the whole the whole thing yeah and see, I love going down there to Mountain Music too. I've been sometimes I have to stay away because I'm like, I know if I go down there, I'm gonna buy something, yes. and, and, and I, I need to save some money right now. But man, you've cre- like I think that you've really helped produce that music community that we're talking about. I, I think you had a, a, a big part in it because this area, if it wasn't for people, you know, trading and slanging guitars like you talk about, and uh, you know, coming together and meeting people and networking and all that. I don't know what the music community around here would be like if it wasn't for Mountain Music Exchange. Well, I appreciate that. I think I, I would like to think we played some some kind of part, uh, and we are constantly working on on being a part of that scene and and uh, creating a, a vibe and an atmosphere where people can hang and trade guitars and. And talk about rock and roll and yeah. love Pink Floyd records and and all that stuff. You know, it's a life's crazy, and we're all working, we're all doing things. You know, life will beat you beat you down, but the uh, rock and roll and a guitar store is always a getaway, a, yeah. a, a way around. You know, outside of your mundane that we all are in sometimes. You know, yeah. so just a, a chance to give that to people and let them come in and hang and i love it i love it it's been my dream since i was a kid and yeah now i get to live it so i'm excited so so what started mountain music exchange what started that whole career path for you well i sold guitars my whole life so i was always buying and selling guitars and i worked for other companies and i'd quit doing that and i was uh in advertising which wow. is crazy as that is but uh and I was doing okay, but I started slinging guitars on the side. So I'd buy a couple, put them in my trunk, and you know, sell them, and yeah, buy a few more and sell them. And then me and Tony were like, "Well, why don't we set up on a Saturday and uh, let people come in and hang?" So like, okay, I work Monday through Friday. Saturday we'll let people hang out and trade some guitars, and we did that for a while. And then I called the guys, and I was like, look, we need to do this. I think I can quit my job, and we can make a living. You know, I can I can pull yeah. this off. And I was like, you know, sweating, you know, what am I going to do if it don't work? Uh, you know, I'm yeah. just slinging a few guitars at a studio, you know. So we uh, pitched in some cash, went and bought some used guitars, and I put in my notice, and it's was like, Let's go for it. And uh, we just started hustling. 
Buy a guitar, sell it. Buy another one, sell it. Buy another one, sell it. Then you have enough to buy two and sell it. And then you just keep keep climbing and keep hanging. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. How long have y'all been in business now for? Six years in the new building. So we're uh, going on our 10-year anniversary. Nice, So man. I quit my job in probably 2013. And we put the hammer down. So, yeah, we're going on 10 years. We'll have a big shindig next year, I'm sure, uh, That's for cool, that 10-year anniversary. And we've got we've got such a good crew. You know, most of the guys, like Jason, started in that little room, and he was working like one day a week. And, you know, yeah. we got Jordan. We ended up getting Jordan from another music store, and he was working a couple days. And I mean, we were hustling. Yeah. I mean, like – what are we going to do to make a living today? You know, every day, like, okay, we got to sell this much. We can do it, you know, yeah. putting a hammer down. And so some of those guys have been with us since then. Wow. And uh, Joni came along, and we've got a couple new ones, but uh, we've added people. But, but yeah, usually when they jump on at the music store, they hang in there for a while, so... Well, you've got people there, man, that the passion is there. You know, yeah. like you, some people, they like music and some people are passionate right. about music. And that's the employees that you have, man. Yeah. Well, they're the A team. I'm so thankful. They are unbelievable. I mean, I'd still be slinging a couple of guitars out of my trunk without them. You know, yeah. they're the, the, they are the A team. So. I can't believe you do, used to do it just out of the trunk of your car. You're almost like a guitar drug dealer, it sounds like. Yes, yes. A PT Cruiser. Purple PT <laughs> Cruiser. A couple guitars in the back. We, Me and Tony would drive. We would find somebody with one for sale. We would drive, buy it, and then we'd be like, do you have anything else we can buy? And so we would just buy them out of houses, and we would drive to Ashland and meet people at gas stations and Wow. And then truck it back here and like put, you know, Facebook, I got a guitar for sale, you know, just hustling hard yeah. as we could, right? I mean, me and Tony's been in some shady, shady, you know, like houses with like dogs and stuff. We're like, whoa, we just need, oh, you know, we need the guitar, but he won't buy it. Are you sure? <laughs> That's what they all say. Yeah. <laughs> He's got teeth, Tony. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that's so fun, though. I, I even, you know, me and Tony talk about it sometimes. We miss those early early days. It's like, yeah. you know, calling up, hey, I heard you had a guitar for sale. Can we meet you at, you know, the Harold Red Light? We'll buy it, you know. Yeah. You pull in a PT Cruiser and the trunk opens and this is before the days of, you know, like Pikeful Trade and Sale on Facebook or oh, yeah, something like that. It was just word that. of mouth. Yeah, yeah, so... There was the internet, so we were we were heavy into it, and I mean we were just digging in. But you know that's so fun. It, it's just like it's a kind of a caveman primitive thing. I'll trade you this for that, you know. I'll trade you, yeah. you know, food for what. It, it it's just the same thing, just in a modern. It's just so cool to be yeah. able, you know. I got this guitar. I'll trade you for your guitar, and not only is it you know making a living or that but it's like this guitar is going to make somebody play better or or become an artist or yeah it's not like we're selling washing machines we're selling something that people love you know a new yeah. fender guitar will change somebody's world you know that's another thing that i was going to bring up you know uh, imagine what y'all are responsible for you're you're literally changing people's lives or making their careers happen as a musician. I mean, it's that that must be something very wild to think about. To, to put guitars in hands, you know what I love. Uh, through the pandemic, so many people have started playing. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing kids come in and get that. You know, they're watching YouTube videos, and then they come in and get that first guitar. They already know what they want because they see it online. You know, they're they're like, my idol plays a Fender Strat. I got to have a Fender Strat. So they come in, and they get to put their hands on that Strat or 
that yeah. telecaster or whatever for that first time and you're like that could be you know the next tyler childers or the next you know chris stapleton yeah i mean you get to watch that first touch of a, wow. a guitar and that's mm. that's kind of special Man. so we really love that and through the pandemic a lot of kids have taken that up so it's kind of on high demand you know guitars and things and we could be watching the, you know because like down to the river we're old guys and you know we're recreating a, this album but there's kids that are going to make the next one if there is one yeah. it could be those kids and that is special that is cool so hopefully hopefully they're right here those the next dark side you never know man yeah. that that's one thing that's special about this area too is like not only just the sheer amount of talent but the the all, all types of music like i know that our area has been predominantly a uh, a bluegrass americana country scene but you have some of the best rock and roll some of the best pop music dustin's kid little jesse you know oh, yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the best hip-hop and mirrored image this area. mirrored image with alternative rock it's it's such a melting pot oh, around yeah. this area yeah it's so it, it is magic to see and that's expanding too there's new places mirrored image is finally you know they've been playing for a while but they're starting to draw a crowd and uh they're starting to see people come just to see them and that's special when when those other kinds of music are starting to starting to draw and starting to uh bloom so little jesse i love him yeah. he, he's he's a monster you know at what he does so who, who just who, who would have thought though that like he would come from dustin i know it don't match it don't fit <laughs> I, i've tried to talk them into doing a song together at least one time and may, hopefully maybe one day that'll happen it's just uh, but but it makes sense you know because he, he's very talented at what he does and it does make sense that he came from oh yeah dustin yeah. hoover yeah and uh he's got dustin's uh, a little bit of dustin's attitude you know he's not going to do what his dad did He's going to do something different, just as good, just different, you know. Exactly, because Dustin had that same yeah. attitude too. Man. Oh yeah, you can't do what your dad's doing. You got to take it, take it your own way. Would you, would you have ever thought that, like, whenever you and Tony were slinging guitars out of that little PT cruiser, that what would be going on right now would be? No, it's crazy, really. I, we didn't know what was going on. I mean, we were just having fun. You know, if you ever got up on a saturday or whatever get you a cup of coffee and you're talking to people about guitars at a gas station i mean it, it's a fun day of of just traveling around and, and and then you get to see the bands play and how that's blooming and it's uh it's spread out pretty big pikeville's prestonsburg alley on main i mean i mean our whole world is developing into a cool cool scene you know so it's just awesome. Our whole little bubble is like magic. And Somebody needs to come in and like grab a piece of that. I feel like, and the, I, I've I've said this a million times on this podcast, but I stand by it. Like Eastern Kentucky is becoming its own little Nashville music row. Yeah, yeah. You know that, that they we've got our own little thing going here. It used to be that you know you had to travel out to Lexington or Nashville or even all the way up into New York or all the way out to California. But now you can just stay right here at home. And a lot of that's probably just the power of the Internet, which is something that I'm very thankful that y'all have took such advantage of. Like the uh, the uh, group that you have on Facebook, I don't know exactly what it is. That yeah, you, that MMA you call community. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, there's, uh, there's guitar. I, I don't know if you're a guitar guy, but there's guitar guys that trade guitars like – like a like a guy would trade knives or a guy would trade guns. Maybe he don't play as much as some, but there is a you know a guitar is a piece of art and a collectible thing and something that can grow in value. And so there's guys that trade for fun, and then there's guys that trade for you know uh, to to build up a collection to sell later on. But uh, a lot of times we'll trade so much that our stuff sells before people get a chance to do it. So we have an MME community for those heavy, heavy hitters that that like to see it 
as soon as it comes in. So we'll put yeah. put up some pictures and things early, and and uh, gives him a chance to grab it, grab it. You know, maybe before it hits the internet and travels off into another state or yeah. whatever. So uh, it's for the it's for the community around to get to dive in. And that's exactly what that creates, too, man. It is a community because, I mean, most of the time, music shops are almost like a pawn shop. You know, you just take your guitar down there and sell it. You never know what type of relationships you're creating by doing what you're doing, too. Oh, yeah. Because somebody can trade a, you know, a, a, a Les Paul for a Fender, and then they get to talking about music, and they're like, oh, let's play on the weekends and then that creates a band and i mean oh, yeah. like it's just the, the the snowball effect of what y'all are doing it's so crazy to think about to me yeah it's cool it's it's a fun it's a fun world to be in it really is and it's a crazy world guitar players are crazy you know yeah. uh, I, I just think like anybody who's into entertainment as us is definitely not normal there there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, few yeah, screws yeah. missing man i mean i'm as crazy as them i got a few guitars that I, and i'm always chasing i mean i sell them all day and then i'm at home at night google you know yeah. gritch whatever and it's like oh man if i could just get my hands on that one you know because <laughs> yeah. they're pieces of art and and they make different sounds and it, it it's just magic if, you, if you've not experienced or you're not a guitar player it's hard to explain but once you've tasted it. And if, and if anybody wants a taste, they can just come right down yes, to sir. Mountain Music Exchange. Yes, sir. But, it's fun. But, man, really, thank you for everything that you and Tony and the rest of the guys and gals have been doing down there. Like I said, man, y- y'all, are, y'all play such a big part in the music scene around here. If it wasn't for y'all, so much of what is going on right now wouldn't be possible. So just a- a- as a fan, thank you, man. I appreciate it. It's just a little rock and roll, putting a little rock and roll in everybody's hands. I love it. But again, to everybody that wants to come out to the show this Saturday, tell them where it's at, where they can get the tickets, all that good stuff. Appalachian Center for the Arts, 730 on Saturday. I think we're going to start. Dustin Hoover's going to play a few songs to get nice. everybody warmed up and in the mood. And uh, then probably at 8 or 830, 815, I don't, I don't know what time, but uh, we will kick into Dark Side of the Moon, play it from start to finish. Everybody's dressing up. You can get tickets at Appalachian Center for the Arts. I don't, I don't know if it's .com or whatever. If you type it in Google, it's going to pop up. Yeah, Appalachian exactly. Center for the Arts. $12 ticket. Get your costume and come out and have a blast. Kevin, thanks again, buddy. Yes, sir. See you next week, folks. Boom. Boom.